at the end of the day, us men, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility for our job to do a good job at our work. We have a responsibility to take care of our families, to take care of our significant others. But what has been missing out is taking the responsibility on for our health and really steering the ship for our family saying, you know what? I recognize that the standard American lifestyle only accelerates disease, creates more depression, more anxiety, more health challenges. And therefore, that means that we do have to swim against the tide. We have to take ownership. And it's okay if it's not perfect. It means that you're stepping up and taking action instead of just simply succumbing to a statistic. Welcome to Nutrition Without Compromise, a podcast brought to you by Orlo Nutrition. We believe that nutrition shouldn't be an either or, that you should never have to sacrifice your morals for your health or that of our home planet. Join natural products veteran Karina Belizzi and experts from around the globe as they discuss healthy solutions that are better for you and better for the planet. Welcome to another interview episode of Nutrition Without Compromise. June is Men's Health Month. And as part of our feature this month, we're going to bring on a few medical professionals to discuss health challenges that affect men. Here are a few statistics to kick us off. Did you know that men are 24% less likely to visit the doctor for regular checkups? And while heart disease remains the number one killer of men, there's a perhaps second killer that is less known and less talked about, and that is simply suicide. This means that now, more than ever, we need to be looking out for them. We need to be looking out for not only their physical bodies, but of their mental health as well. Thankfully, a good diet, physical activity, and lifestyle changes can offer a world of difference for men of all ages. And this is something we've talked about before. Getting diet, nutrition, and sleep right can positively affect mental outlook, reduce anxiety, and help today's problems just seem more manageable and less intense. Everything looks better after a good night's sleep, after all. So to talk about men's health and the things that we can all do to naturally support them, their physical and their mental health, I'm joined by a doctor of chiropractic and friend of the show who you've heard from before, and that's Dr. Forrest Sauer. Dr. Sauer is a chiropractor and the founder of Twin Oaks Health an alternative medicine practice that specializes in helping people manage complex health challenges like diabetes, thyroid disease, fatigue, depression. They've assisted thousands of patients who have masked their symptoms for years with pills and surgeries to ultimately heal from the inside out and live a long and healthy life. I'm excited to invite him back and hear his insights on this important topic. Dr. Forrest Sauer, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. I don't think there's any probably more important topic in men's health than this one today. So I'm really excited to dig into it. Yeah. And I I just am so appreciative that you've joined us. I, I want to start first, though, with a little bit of history about you. What made you first decide that you needed to become a chiropractor and help people pursue better health? Well, there's multiple reasons as many things in life, but uh, I think I shared my personal story and why last time is because I found my grandma brain dead on the sidewalk when I was 10 years old. And it was from that moment on that I realized that I needed to start taking responsibility from my health. And both my parents, they worked in the healthcare industry. My mom's a nurse. My dad's a nurse and methodist. He put people to sleep for surgery. and hearing them come home at the end of the day and share stories about how they help people was was empowering to me. And when I was first going into college, decided I was going to become a medical doctor. And I quickly found out that, you know, medical doctors, their responsibilities and their job titles have really changed in the past 30, 40 years where doctors are now told what to do what labs to order. And they're kind of handcuffed. And I didn't want to take that route or that approach. And that's why I decided to become a chiropractor because I wanted that freedom. I wanted to empower men and women how to regain their health. 
uh, because it was in the process of me getting uh, my, my doctorate. There's a lot of stress going to college. I struggled from depression and anxiety pretty significantly uh, for a long time. And I really wasn't showing any hope. And so having, you know, the statistic where the number two killer of men is suicide resonates close to home for me. Cause I used to struggle with a lot of those same symptoms and really with the lack of awareness on where I could turn to, to get help. Yeah. Well, and I think this is more a problem and I'm not to say it's a less a problem in older years either, but when you really just look at young men, and especially in the age of COVID, when we had to go so insular for so long, and, and just at this moment in life, when young men would be looking at what's next for me, right? Yes. How yes. do I enter this world? I'm expected and I have these societal expectations of what I'm supposed to be able to do. I need to be able to pay rent and have a good job and pursue whatever my my craft is going to be and feeling like you can't live up to any expectations in this era is just, I think, something that many people suffer from. And it's thankfully something that seems to be coming to a bit of a close as we get more active, music shows are happening more, all of these things are we can engage and, and be together have improved. But I think this, this real fact that men don't go to the doctors as often, it's, it's like that's one thing, right? And perhaps it's this kind of stoic nature of male culture in a way of not wanting to talk about, you know, what's going wrong. I mean, perhaps that's it, or I'm doing fine. I don't need to look at my health markers. So let's talk about what you find when you see your male patients and how you help them on their journey. Uh, first of all, like me growing up myself, I grew up in that same male culture where, you know, we can chew down trees with our teeth. Like, I don't need to go <laughs> to some doctor to tell me that I need to start changing my lifestyle. Like, I got it. I'm going to eat my pizza, drink my beer, and we're going to be satisfied and we're going to check out by the time we're 60. Like, you know, that that's kind of male culture now. And the people, the, the men that I see, what... what the tide is starting to shift because at the end of the day, us men, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility for our job to do a good job at our, at our work. We have a responsibility to take care of our families, to take care of our, our significant others. But what has been missing out is taking the responsibility on for our health and really steering the ship for our family saying, you know what? I recognize that the standard American lifestyle only accelerates disease, creates more depression, more anxiety, more health challenges. And therefore, that means that we do have to swim against the tide. We have to take ownership. And it's okay if it's not perfect. It means that you're stepping up and taking action instead of just simply succumbing to a statistic. And that's something where I think is being missed in the male culture. And it is turning because of the awareness, but people are feeling lost. They're feeling confused. They don't trust medicine. They don't trust doctors anymore. The COVID has shown, has, has really shown a light on that. And people are having a wake up call and people are thirsty for where to go. What can I do for my body? What can I do for my nutrition? What can I do for my lifestyle? So that way I don't feel like, like checking out at the end of the day, or maybe checking out of life. Cause this is the very real consequence of not taking responsibility for ourselves. If we keep pushing responsibility onto others, blaming others, we are not in control of our life. I think Jocko will in, in his book, extreme ownership says it's, you know, there's only one person who's at fault and that is you. And that may sting a little bit, but there's an incredible amount of freedom in there as well, because that means that you have the power to change. Well, and what do they say? It's, you know, you're in control of your reactions. And I think so many people forget that. Um, I've read that book too. And I mean, I think many people in leadership get assigned to that rating, so to speak, yes, by they their do. boss. Like, <laughs> oh, you got to read this book. It reminded me a bit of this much older work called Message to Garcia, which is a little bit like, you know, the, the commitment to do the job, just get it done type of mentality. Um, but it's a very interesting work because it is taking this moment to reflect and say, well, what could I have done differently? And taking ownership for that perspective is something I think that we all need to do. 
Um, but I think too, and this is something we touched on um, when I spoke with Dr. Bill Harris about the omega-3 blood spot test. He said too often people, they get a test in front of them as a, for example, and they know they should take it, but they want to improve things first. Yes. And I think they look at going to doctors that way too. Like, oh, I need to go to the doctor, but I want to lose 10 pounds first because they're going to make me get on that scale. And I'm going to hear, you know, all these diet and lifestyle things. I know, I know. I just don't want to hear that. So I'm going to put it off, but the 10 pounds doesn't come off and then they don't go to the doctors. So what do we do to get people to have that natural annual habit of seeing a physician so that they can address any minor complaints they might've had? which who knows, could have just been a marker for some other challenge that could be much bigger. It starts with with the culture, like I said, the decision. It's it, waiting to lose 10 pounds to go into the doctor. It's kind of like waiting to have your life right until you go to church. Like that's that's not how things work, people. We're not supposed to live in isolation. We're supposed to live in a community. So lean on others. This whole lone wolf mentality that I am going to go ahead and fix all of my problems by myself without anybody's help, that's a broken mentality. I know it's been very popular as Americans, but even Arnold Schwarzenegger, the manliest man anybody can say, he said, I am not a self-made man. I have stood on the shoulders of giants who have come before me. And that is why I'm in the position that I'm at. So how does that relate to your health? It means that even though you don't have the perfect health, maybe you are 10 pounds overweight, maybe you kind of know that your cholesterol is high and you don't want to have it checked because you're scared of going on a medication, have it checked, get some coaching, stand on shoulders of giants who have come before you that can show you how to fix it. Use nutrition like what Orlo presents. It has been shown to improve those blood markers, rely on the support of others. And quite honestly, this is my own personal belief, but the faster we can get away from this lone wolf mentality and as a band of brothers come together or a band of sisters come together, the stronger our culture is going to be. Oh, I love that. It is community. It is collaboration. And if you're in this health journey on your own, you're not going to be able to make informed decisions. And so let's talk about making more informed decisions. In our last connection, you talked a bit about the battery of tests that you might run for an individual coming to see you to help get a baseline. So let's talk about that. With, with lab tests, well, first, let's, the reason why we take labs is because it eliminates guessing games. It gives us very clear direction on where we're going to go. And uh, it's lovely if you've had tests taken beforehand. That's amazing. Insurance is only going to pay for labs that they can medicate for. So that's a big challenge. But when we take labs, we go nose to toes. We test for everything because I don't want to miss anything. And the kind of, I guess, life cycle of a man is maybe in their 20s and 30s, th things aren't perfect. And maybe we're feeling a little low. We get used to it. and We just kind of suck it up in our 40s and 50s. And then we're dragged into our 60s and 70s. We spent the past 40 years selling our body to work. And by the time we get those quote unquote golden years, we have absolutely nothing left. And so when I'm talking about creating responsibility for your health, it's so that you have that end in mind. By the time you hit 60, you get to be, you could be able to retire, enjoy time with the grandkids, be able to start checking those things off the bucket list. You have life after work. And so where do you go? Well, find someone who is an expert in nutrition and find someone that you want to be like. Don't go to your doctor and if he's on a couple of medications for cholesterol and a high blood pressure medication. Like maybe he's the wrong guy to listen to. Don't ask your broke uncle about financial advice. Same thing goes with your health. Find someone who lives a lifestyle that you want to emulate, has their health, and get their advice. That's called a coach and a mentor. I love that. Now, how do you guide people to track their health progress over time? What are the key things that you have them look at? So perhaps they can even monitor themselves in the day-to-day. -day? Yes. Uh, so 
one excellent way to start monitoring themselves is, well, first, the way that we do it in our office, we take tests before and then after. So tests before, that way we have a baseline, that way we know where we're going, and then we make some lifestyle changes, and then we test afterwards. Usually it's three, four months after we start making some lifestyle changes to make certain we are headed in the right direction. It takes the body about that long to, to get around, to start turning around. But really, symptoms, your body's telling you a lot. So learning how to live and listen to your body. You shouldn't feel like you got ran over by a truck every single morning. That's called inflammation. You got some inflammation in your body. And you need to start start decreasing the sugar or processed oils or uh, you know start moving around more. Start moving the body. All those are signs and symptoms that your body there that there is something wrong. And so listening to your body is a big one. It, are you strategically and slowly noticing improvements in your health? Here's how you know if you're going in the right direction. If you notice any changes within the first 30 days, the first month, you should be able to notice some changes and improvements, specifically men. Men typically respond very quickly. Uh, they don't have a lot of the same hormonal challenges that women tend to have. And so 30 days is a really good marker to make certain that if a man is making lifestyle changes, they're eating less sugar, less processed oils, more meat, more protein, less carbs, that's going to give you a very telltale direction if this is moving forward. And I think Orlo is also doing some some before and after testing, aren't they? Yeah. And this is something that is, I've never seen any company do this. And we highlighted this in our episode with Dr. Bill Harris as we kicked off this program um, on May 22nd. But as it stands right now for a limited time, what we're doing is really special. We're giving people with their subscription for Orlo's Omega-3s one omega quant omega-3 index test so they can establish a baseline with their very first shipment which includes our glass jar which is absolutely beautiful it's a reusable bottle and even the box is printed with algae ink the company is so mindful of sustainability so that's awesome. it looks like this they get their bottle they get two refill pouches and so each month is a pouch and you just fill the empty jar with one of the pouches and then fill the next. Um, at the second shipment, they ship you another set of the powerful active omega-3s. And these are in the polar lipid form, so they get into your system more quickly. And even though with something like medical tests, I completely agree, it typically takes about three to four months to notice measurable differences that are really going to count there's a reason for that, especially with fat-soluble vitamins or fat-soluble nutrients like omega-3s are fat-soluble. It takes time to really kind of give your oil change a, a, a thrust, right? And then after that first four months, your third shipment arrives, and that's when we send you another omega-3 index test along with your product. Now, I know we spoke about briefly how people say, oh no, I want to go ahead and get better before I take a test. I mean, it's really important to establish your baseline, continue taking the product every single day. And if four months later, you take that second test, you're going to see likely a pretty dramatic change. Now, I went through in the episode with Bill Harris, and I took the test on air. So I don't need to do it again. But I want to tell you what the experience was like. I just opened the clamshell. There's a couple of little finger pricks in there. It's quite painless, actually. You just register your kit number online. It asks you a couple simple questions. Um, you can choose to pay for additional tests if you want to. So like if you didn't have a vitamin D baseline, as for example, and you wanted to, you could go ahead and add that one to your free order and um, pay a small fee and get that result as well. You don't have to do that, right? You just go ahead and submit it. And then you send the, the blood in, it's just, just a little blood spot on a card. There's a prepaid envelope inside. And after you send it in and they receive it, within five days, you get the results emailed to you. And the results show to you on a kind of graph, you know, where you fall in that four to 12% plus perspective. Now, before I took this, I've been taking omegas a long, long time. Like this, I don't, what's my baseline going to look like? But the change I had made four months before is I stopped eating fish. So this is a new baseline for me. I just continue taking the same omega-3s every day that I take, but I stopped consuming fish. And so I expected my test results to perhaps be below 8%. Um, and I wasn't sure by how much. 
they came back at 6.47. So six and a half, it's solidly between what is maybe a little suboptimal and optimal, right? Like I need to perhaps do a little bit more to get my saturation levels up to 8%. And the reason that 8% threshold is so important is that when people get that kind of saturation in their cells, they get enough omega-3 in their cells up to 8%, then as Bill Harris shared, all cause mortality drops. Now, I don't know about you, but that's that's pretty important to me. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to do a little work to get back up to 8%. Now I have this knowledge in hand. I said, okay, well, I've been taking two a day. Now I'm just going to take three, which is like a dose and a half. And that's reasonable to me, again, because I'm not consuming fish. And so I may also add something else I changed is I started adding um, walnuts to my smoothie in the morning, just so I get a little bit more dietary omega-3 and a precursor to EPA and DHA. But I think that will help. And so in this combination of having an highly active, bioactive omega-3 in the pololipid form, which absorbs up to three times better than fish oil, I'm primed for success. I'm seeing that I am maintaining my omega-3 levels and I can make a few changes to improve it and get up to that 8%. So that's my goal. And that's where I'm, that's my journey. <laughs> I love it. And I love what you're doing because you can think of it, let's treat it like your health is a game. Let's gamify it. You're right. taking that test and that's your scoreboard. Let's go and say this is a sports game. You're like you're, You don't just simply check the scoreboard at the end of the game. You know, you check it all the way through. And that's exactly what that test is doing. It's saying, where are we at? Let's go ahead and check again and again and again. And we're just checking and seeing where are we are. We are we healthy? Are we not? Are we winning or are we losing? And yeah. I, I love it. What Bill Harris said is like all cause mortality goes down because let's go ahead and think about what your body uses omega threes for. Like, yes, it's an antioxidant. It's going to decrease inflammation. It helps out with that. But specifically with, with men is your body uses healthy fats to create hormones. That's how it works. Same so, with like, women. You, I mean, we just had this conversation about women. women's health. Yeah. Uh -huh. Excellent. So like you need that healthy fat. So healthy fat converts into cholesterol and cholesterol converts into hormones. And so think of it, the most common or the most popular medication is a statin medication which actually drives down your cholesterol. So it's like you're stealing your body's ability to create hormones or create testosterone. And testosterone helps with muscle mass, muscle growth motivation, sex drive, feelings of, of worth and, and happiness and a whole bunch of other stuff. So think about your average male, once they hit their 60s, they start losing the muscle mass in their shoulders. They start sitting more in their lazy boy. When the kids come over with the grandkids, they're watching the football team or the football game instead of uh, you know playing with the grandkids. I call it grumpy grandpa syndrome because what's literally happening <laughs> is their testosterone is being depleted because they're probably on a statin medication and their body isn't allowed to create testosterone anymore. And that's why they're always pissed. So this is creating that hormonal imbalance. I, I just think we all can relate to this. I have a um, grumpy grandpa in my life too. <laughs> so, you know, um, it is what it is. And, and then I also think that that may contribute to what we see as really this old man body type where you get the really massive yes. belly and skinny arms and legs. And, you know, is that really a healthy body? You know, when you have to be on five medications to manage your health, um, five and more. I forget the exact statistics, but something like at over age 50, the percent of people that are taking five or more medications was alarmingly high. I know 40% of Americans are taking a medication over 40 years old. So four out of 10 Americans are already on some kind of medication over 40. And think of it, back when you're in high school, nobody thought that we were going to be 20 pounds overweight on one or two medications and suck in wind when we get to the top of the stairway. Like nobody <laughs> thought that, but yet here we sit. And if we don't want to be dragged into our sixties and seventies, this full circle, because I like closed loops, this comes back to creating that responsibility and treating our body with the amount of respect that it deserves. And it does take discipline. It means that, Hey, we can't continue living the lifestyle that vast majority of Americans make because I don't want to end up like grandpa. Or I don't want to end up like grandma. That's the motivation. I have a question, and this just relates to the, the health complaints that I've heard other doctors say often come up 
when they get behind closed doors with male patients. And that is that the health concerns that they'll talk about is, I don't feel as energetic as I used to. Yeah. I am worried about my libido or my virility. What can we do to help men open themselves perhaps to these conversations and get through the drivers of what leads them to have low libido, low energy? Well, first off, it's very embarrassing for a man to go through something like that when they, when they can't get it up or they have ED or they have, you know, they just don't have the sex drive that they want. They're feeling literally like less of a man. And there's a tremendous amount of, of guilt. There's a tremendous amount of shame that comes along with that. And, you know, that's why Viagra became such a popular drug because so many men do struggle with that on a daily basis, but nobody's talking about it. So that, that comes down to the individual where they have to be willing to talk about it and open up and say, Hey, I'm having some of these challenges. What can you do naturally? Well, it's everything that we have actually been talking about. High, high volumes of omega-3 are going to decrease inflammation. So how does your, how, how, how does, you know, erections occur? Well, it occurs through something called nitrous oxide. It allows dilation of the vessels and it's not going to happen when you have massive amounts of inflammation in the body, circle back to what you said as is the, the main male body when they turn into the 60s. They got the pat belly, they lose the muscle mass they, in their shoulders, and they're just they're just kind of kind of grouchy. The reason why they have the pot belly is because your liver is diseased. Your liver creates 80% of the cholesterol in your body, it's not the eggs that you eat. That's not it. It's the liver. And so if your cholesterol is messed up, it means that your liver is messed up. So what creates damage to your liver? Alcohol is the number one thing that most people think of. <laughs> yes, I said usually. it, you didn't have to say it. Yeah. No, usually they think of alcohol, but it's also overconsumption of fat, right? Overconsumption of bad fats. Of bad fats, yes. Bad I'm not fats. talking about omega-3s. I always say yes. omega-3s are the exception. You could eat as much omega-3 as you wanted and it would not damage you. But it's yes. you know overconsumption of things like trans fats, omega-6s, um, a lot of seed, a lot of fried food. Um, the reason fried food is so bad is not necessarily because omega-6s are bad by nature, right? But it's because as you fry with them, you denature them, like they get kind of damaged and then those damaged fats get integrated into your body and yep. we're really good at absorbing fat because that's how our body was designed to extract energy from nature right and this is yes. a really rich nutrition source and so you take these damaged fats that might otherwise be healthy and they they mess up your system and what happens 100 percent, and so you have these these omega-6s when you cook them at that high of a temperature, your body no longer recognizes them, but because of the fat, it still takes it in. And so your body's going to use what you give it. If you're like, remember where hormones come from, they come from fat. So if all you're eating is the fried foods and the, and the chips and, and you know, everything else that is comes in box or cans, that's what your body's going to use. And this is why vast majority of Americans have hormonal imbalances. It's because of what you're giving your body in the first place. And that's why supplementing with, with omega-3s, you know, really in the supplement industry, you do get what you pay for. I was just talking yesterday with a client and she was asking about magnesium and she found this great deal at Costco and we had to just stop and take a minute. But, uh, but you know, it's like you yeah. do like the most expensive supplement that you can purchase is the one that you're going to pee out and not use. So spend the extra amount, invest, invest into your health and get what is actually absorbed. And the fact that yours is designed the way that it's designed is really just kind of a breakthrough in the fish oil industry, which is amazing. Yeah. Well, we aren't in fish oil and that's one of the things that's different because we're in algae, but, um, you know, this is one of the breakthroughs with technology today because we've actually gotten to a point where we can grow algae in a super responsible way, retain its polar lipid structure because of the fact that we can extract it so gently. Um, and that by optimizing its growing conditions, we've essentially given it everything it needs to thrive. So its levels of omega-3s are naturally higher, right? And so because they're naturally higher, 
then we don't have to do as much to it. Whereas if you get a fish oil and you have to process that oil, you have to first remove toxins, right? And you have to concentrate it. You winterize it. There's all these things that get done to fish oil before it ever makes it into a capsule. And in some ways that denatures it. Even if it is re-esterified, as some companies have um, chosen to do, it's not the same as the oil existed in that sardine in the first place, and it's certainly not in its polar lipid form anymore. And so that's what we're really working to do different with Orlo, and um, I just think it's a huge breakthrough. I have actually seen people say things like, you know, I was always told that if I took fish oils or omega-3s in general, that my dry eye complaints would go away, but they never did until I took your product. And so I just think that there's something to be said for going to this next level and using the benefits of technology to really help you get there, um, to understand that we can cut straight over, jump right over that fish and go to algae, which is where the fish even gets their EPA and DHA in the first place. So My hope is that more people can take advantage of this. We're going to give them the baseline test at month zero, so to speak, and then again with their fifth month and help them see dramatic changes, not only in how they feel, but on the actual results of their paperwork. So proof um, is in the pudding. And I absolutely love that. So yes. So you'll have to join me in this endeavor and take a, take a test, take some more low and, and see how you do four months later. I'll check my score. That sounds good. <laughs> now, I wanted to to wrap this conversation up today with any tips that you might have specifically for men um, just to lead a little bit more healthy of a life, perhaps handle some of those mental health challenges that they might face as well. Y- yes, absolutely. And it's it's simple advice, but it's not exactly going to be easy. And I'll tell you, because I would struggled for a long time with my own mental health challenges and I had tried every single supplement underneath the sun and nothing ever seemed to touch it. It wasn't until I did this that I noticed a, a shift, a, a big, big shift in my mental wellness. And that was completely eliminating seed oils or harmful oils out of my lifestyle. So what are seed oils? Well, it's soybean, it's peanut, vegetable, canola oil. It's what you're talking about is those, those highly processed oils. Yeah that are in, here's the scary part, they're in 95% of stuff that's in the grocery store. It is so hard. It's disgusting. I'm laughing because I've gone through this journey too. It's very challenging. I love oat milk in my coffee. I've said goodbye to dairy, right? And so I still use oat milk from time to time. And guess what the fat is? It's seed oil. I sometimes make enough of it at home myself, but then I'm like, I run out, I'm at the store, I pick up the oat milk and and I know every time I put it in my coffee, I have that moment of I'm putting seed oil in my coffee. This doesn't feel right. You know, and so there's all these places that it gets hidden because you wouldn't think about it. You don't think about it. You think about it. It's milk. And so, in a way, your mind doesn't connect to the fact that it could be coming from a seed. It's it's very sneaky. So you have to read labels. And yeah, like I said, it's simple, but it's not easy. Your mind yeah. is going to be shook when you realize and recognize how many seed oils you have been exposed to. And here's the connection. So your brain is 80% fat. If you're feeding it unhealthy fats, you're going to have an unhealthy brain. So switch completely away from it. You're going to notice a major shift in your overall mental health and wellness and most likely inflammation issues. Uh, Same. I I recognize like when I uh, go over to... Uh, The in-laws or my families, they don't live the same lifestyle that that we do. So, you know, we eat what they eat. We're gluten-free and whatnot, but they're not as strict as we are in our household. And I can tell in the morning if I have been eating more seed oils because of the inflammation cascade, it does start because of the effects that it does have on my health. And you can can notice that quickly. Yeah. I get um, sometimes if I'm not too careful, I'll start to get eczema little bumps on my fingers. Like that's one of the first tells for me. Another one is that um, the balls of my feet will start to just get a little um, sore. And this is because of probably the innumerable road miles I've run running marathons. So 
repeat injury, right? You know, but I'm not going to stop. I love to get out there and explore. So um, I do have to watch for those things. And what when I notice that, then I look at what I've been eating and I'm like, oh yeah, right. So none of that. And how I feel changes and it changes for the better. I, I also wanted to just speak to something for a moment because we mentioned coffee. Yeah. And I know that you happen to have founded a coffee company. And we I do. wanted to give you a moment to talk about why you chose to do that sprout and blossom um yeah. and share with the world that i'm actually drinking a cup of your coffee right now um it's delicious and i did put some oat milk in it with a little bit of seed oil that i know is in there <laughs> uh well thank you i appreciate it. that's generous of you uh yeah we started sprout and blossom number one because i'm crazy and i don't want to stop but uh <laughs> but you're number not busy two enough, right yeah because we're not busy enough uh the clinic wasn't keeping me busy enough so we started sprout and blossom because honestly like the standard American lifestyle and the standard American diet only accelerates disease. It pisses me off that that's the standard. And so we wanted to do our small part and change that. That's why we started Sprout and Blossom. We started decided to go with coffee first because it was the easiest thing to, to start with. And we'll be, you know, as things are growing and moving forward, we'll be rolling out healthy snacks, healthier foods that not only just simply are not bad for you, but also accelerate healing and, uh, and have ingredients that way. So the, the bean that you're drinking right now is, uh, from a part of Guatemala called what to win they go. Uh, it's from the high regions. Say, say of, that again. Uh, uh, yeah, you got me. All right. What to win they go. Okay. That's great. It's Thank about, you. it's about, uh, three, 13 letters long. And anyways, it's in the high volcanic regions. And that's where the soil is densest, has the most nutrition, high carbon, and all of that flavor gets passed into the coffee bean. And that's why we chose it because it has the high nutrition value, but also low mold. So there's very little mycotoxins in there because mm. of the low, uh, low moisture. Mm. So you sound like you might be a fan of Dave Asprey there with the low mold conversation, but it is important. And um, as I will nod to a prior episode here, when I interviewed Dr. William Lee on this podcast, he didn't take my coffee from me. So I was very pleased with that. Um, coffee can be health promoting. It's positively associated with maintaining brain health into your old, old age, negatively associated with things like Alzheimer's and dementia. So, you know, drinking a lot of coffee even isn't necessarily a problem as long as you're getting plenty of water and you don't have other gastric issues. Now, I've never had, you know, things like heartburn or anything like that from drinking a lot of coffee, but some people I know have had that. So, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with the quality of the coffee you're drinking personally. Most of it has to do with the quality of coffee that you're drinking. Absolutely. So you shouldn't have the pit sweats. You shouldn't have racing brain. Your coffee shouldn't taste like, I don't know, ash. <laughs> it shouldn't, it should actually taste good. And that's why we roast it the way that we do. So that way it is, it, it maximizes that flavor. Yeah. So what other um, what kind of tools do you have in your tool shed as far as dietary concerns? So we said basically eliminate seed oils which is harder than you initially think. It's not just saying I'm not going to buy corn oil to fry my food with. It's, you know, saying goodbye to a lot of packaged foods and most packaged foods, most freezer foods, most cheeses, American cheeses for sure. Don't eat any of those. <laughs> other, other things that, because a, a lot of people suffer from carbohydrate or sugar cravings. So a really easy way to shortcut that is actually to massively increase the amount of healthy fats that you are consuming. So your body has two main fuel sources. Number one is sugar. The other one is fat. And if you're suffering from sugar cravings late at night, you turn into a zombie and you raid your pantry, that kind of thing, uh, increase the amount of calories that you're getting from healthy fats, uh, oral nutrition being a healthy fat to 50% of your daily calories, which is a lot. It's a lot, but it's going to transition your body to metabolizing that fat for energy and you're going to accelerate your body's actually hormone production because of that, because you're giving your body so many tools. And then what people find is that their appetite shrinks, right? Yeah. Yep. So this Absolutely. is the, the winning point I want to share with everybody here about reducing your consumption of omega-6s and eliminating seed oils in particular. When you take the seed oils out, often the cravings disappear because 
you don't necessarily have that same stimulus for eat more. Um, and you also, when you're reducing your sugar load, you're increasing your leptin sensitivity. And so the triggers that say I'm full, they start to work again. And you already won't be eating a bag of chips because all of those bag of chips are full of seed oils. <laughs> so right. It'll be on your verboten list, right? Um, so it just, it's a mindful way to go towards something new. Now, are you also advocating for not consuming whole grains and shifting away from those grains? I'm curious. My opinions are a little bit biased because most of our clients end up being autoimmune and uh, and have some challenges with that. So vast majority of them do have challenges with with grains, like specifically gluten. Um, I don't advocate for people being 100% away from that because I want people to have variety and have a you know a, a nice quality of life. But oftentimes it does mean living a more gluten free lifestyle. And I recognize that most gluten-free foods are filled with still corn and seed oils and rice. So be very aware of what is in there. Just because it's labeled gluten-free doesn't mean that it's healthy. So be aware of that package. But that is something that we do still still advocate for. Yeah. And to your point about corn oil in particular, those with autoimmune conditions can be particularly sensitive to inflammatory cas cascades specifically from corn. And that can be, Absolutely. I think, from both the sugars in corn and also from the oils in it. So it's a complex issue. I know health isn't um, a single solution for everybody. There's not a, a cookie cutter approach that works for every single person because we're all kind of unique packages in ourselves. But there are some things that seem to work across the board. And what I personally notice is when I go grain-free, I'm not grain-free all the time, and I'm certainly not grain-free now. But when I go grain-free, I have less bloating. And um, that also means no soy. So I have no soy and no grain. Then I have less bloating. I have a slimmer waistline, even if my weight remains the same. And I feel more connected to my gut. And so that's my personal experience. I've heard similar stories from other people when they go grain free. Well, that's really how our bodies were designed to to operate. Really, is, is the amount of grains that Americans consume is absolutely astounding, uh, and we were never designed to handle that much grains, whether it be processed or even like a whole grain. So I'm not saying no entirely for the rest of your life. It's not that black and white. You can have it on occasion. You're probably not. You're having it to the amount that Americans have today. That's honestly not feasible for vast majority of Americans. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I can't think of a better note on which to end simply because not only have we covered a lot of territory, but I think you've given them tools to work with. And if we can start to eliminate seed, seed oils, even step by step, you know, give up one thing and find a healthier habit to replace it with, yes. then you'll be on a, a path towards wellness. Now, before we go, I do want to offer you the opportunity to talk about how Twin Oaks Chiropractic could help people that might be interested in learning more from you today. Thanks. Uh, with Twin Oaks Health, uh, we primarily help people. We, we practice functional medicine, which is getting at the root cause of the problem. So if you don't want to mask things with medications or even I don't know, 40 different vitamins and minerals every single day being shoved down your gullet, uh, seek us out and we are able to help transition lifestyles so that way you can live a healthier lifestyle with a minimal amount of nutrition on a daily basis. So that's that's our approach. We deal with lifestyle. We educate you. I don't want to see someone for the rest of their life. That means they haven't learned anything. So we help our clients. We transition their lifestyles so that way they can live a healthy lifestyle after us on their own terms. So if you have a thyroid problem, inflammation, or just exhausted all of the time, those are the people that we really love to help and we get consistent results with them. Fantastic. So they can reach you at Twin Oaks Chiropractic or Twin Oaks Health. Sorry. That's how yeah, Twin Oaks say. Health. I do maybe one adjustment still uh, a month, but that's about it. I got a couple of clients that are still on the books for that, but primarily it is educating people in health and wellness and treating them or addressing their issues through functional medicine. So oh, twinoakshealth.com, you can schedule a discovery call with me or my team and, uh, and we can see what it looks like for you to get started. 
That's fantastic. Now, I will be sure, as always, to include links to where they can find you and even that Sprout and Blossom coffee, which is delicious. Cheers to you. Um, you. (laughs) With show notes, as I always do. Any other closing words? I just appreciate it. Thank you so much. Guys, don't eat the elephant all at once. Focus on seed oils. Master that and create that as a healthy habit. And then come on back and learn to improve your health to the next level. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. As always, I will be sure to include links to where you can learn more about Dr. Forrest Sauer and his practice, Twin Oaks Health, with show notes. I will even include his new coffee company too, Sprout and Blossom. It's delicious, especially if you like a really nice medium or dark roast. I've had both and they're incredible. Visit orlonutrition.com for our complete blog, including features that you won't find anywhere else. And remember too, that you have an opportunity here with this new omega-3 index kit to do your own testing. So Orlo is really putting their faith and their product and their money where their mouth is. You can subscribe to just a six month period and ultimately see not only what your baseline is, but also how you do after four months of daily supplementation. Now, these omegas are in their polar lipid form. They're not going to burp back on you, even if you drink them with a cup of coffee like I often do in the morning. So it's easy to take just two small pills a day and you get all the omegas that you need. And then you can check after four months and see how you're doing. Now, for our listeners specifically, we do have a special offer in addition. You can use the coupon code NWC test for nutrition without compromise test. That will get you an additional discount off of this subscription that you won't get any better price anywhere else. And frankly, they're basically mailing you $100 in tests with that six month subscription. So, I think you should take us up on that. If this limited time offer happens to have expired, now you can always reach out to us via email at hello at orlonutrition.com. If you have questions about what we covered or topics that you'd like us to dive into, please reach out via our social channels at Orlo Nutrition or send me an email note. As we close today's show, I hope that you'll raise a cup of your favorite beverage with me as I raise a cup of Sprout and Blossom coffee and say my closing words to you and to Dr. Forrest Sauer. Here's to your health. Thanks for listening to Nutrition Without Compromise. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to learn more, visit orlonutrition.com and join our mailing list. You'll gain access to complete show notes, features, and informative blogs because nutrition shouldn't be an either or. 